How's it going guys? This is Fire Fox again here and welcome back to the Crazy Cooking Vlog. Now, today I am alone. But that is not a problem. My children decided that it was such a beautiful day outside that uh, you know what? They figured they'd go out and play and since uh, yeah, my wife's kind of had them held hostage in the in the house for the last couple of days. Uh, I figured it would be a good idea to just let them go. Anyways, today, today we will be cooking uh, chicken with creamy garlic sauce. Garlic sauce? Garlic, yes. Creamy garlic sauce. Yes, that's it. It's <laughs> it's a recipe that I found online, um, and I will give I will leave a link down uh, in the description to the website that I found it on. Um, shout out to those guys, as I don't know if it's ever going to be any good, but hopefully by the end of this we will know. So let's get cooking. All right. So what we have here, I'm just going to go through the ingredients really quick. Ferguson. There it goes. Okay. So we've got the Italian style, uh, the Italian style breadcrumbs. We've got our butter. Regular butter, just any kind of butter that you want. If you want to use margarine, that should be fine. Uh, we've got minced California style garlic. Any garlic is fine as long as it's minced very well. Salt and pepper. It actually suggests to use white pepper, but we don't have white pepper, so I'm going to substitute black pepper this time. We have our chicken broth. Chicken broth. We have 100% Parmesan cheese from Kraft. Not a sponsor. Again, like I said before, Nothing that I nothing that I use in these these videos is ever a sponsor, so don't think that I'm sponsoring any of these. It just happens to be the stuff that I've got in my house. Anyways, uh, Philadelphia cream cheese, um, basically any kind of cream cheese. You, generally, normally I use uh, the no name brand stuff, but uh, this was the most accessible that we had because I didn't have any in the house, so my wife had to go and get some. It was on sale. There you go. It was on sale. So uh, our Canola oil, any oil should be fine, but we use canola oil because that's the more healthy one for you, I guess. Um, and cream, it says to use half and half, but I like things a little bit creamier and I'm not watching my weight. So, <laughs> flour, we've got our big flour container. You guys should know this one by now from uh, all the rest of our videos. And we've got our chicken. I've got six pieces of chicken. The recipe is actually for four pieces of chicken but I've got six because I like to eat and so does the rest of my family. And hopefully it is good. That's the hope, it looks good. Okay. Yeah, and that's the rest. That's the recipe there. So we're actually, we're actually using the recipe. However, again, I'm not <laughs> actually doing, I'm probably not gonna follow it to a T. So just kind of follow along with me and hopefully you guys kind of get the gist of it and it turns out well for you guys as well. Follow your taste buds. Always follow your nose. And uh, some of the stuff that you're going to need is, is a pan, um, some wax paper. Um, I don't know where my wax paper is. So, and a, a meat mallet, but we're going to use my hammer and I'm just going to put some stuff, uh, some, uh, some either plastic wrap or, uh, or a sandwich bag and just tie it. You can also do it in a sandwich bag. Same with any of the, the uh, shaking you have to do, put in plastic um, sandwich bag. All right, so we're gonna get it set up and then I'll show you everything else that we kind of need. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, this is what I did with the hammer because this is all that I've got. And I actually do use this for, for uh, construction construction and that kind of thing. So, um, what I did was I took a sandwich bag and I just wrapped it around and put a, uh, put a uh, rubber band on the bottom just so it doesn't move around and take off on me. And, uh, kind of have to jimmy rig it a little bit because the tongs on the back you don't want it to start ripping through. So we've got that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each one of these each one of these pieces of chicken I'm going to put it inside of there and then wrap it over so then it's doubly sanitary and then we just want to lightly pound it. You don't want to take you don't really want to take your frustrations out on this Um, you don't really want to take your frustrations out on it, you just want to kind of like lightly tap it. Especially with a 20, what, a 20 ounce mallet? Or a 20 ounce, 20 ounce hammer? You don't really want to be like taking 
taking full on swings at it. You just want to kind of soften up the meat until it more or less goes pretty much flat. It's not going to go completely flat, but it's going to be close. You just want to keep on doing that until it comes out nice and even. Even. Yeah, so it doesn't have all the bumps and everything like that that most of the rest of the ones have, like this one here. These ones are actually pretty flat, dude. They're pretty nice, but they still have that little bubble on the side. You want to kind of just flatten those out, and make sure that everything is kind of nice and even all the way across. So we're going to keep doing that for a little bit. And the other thing too is like the reason why you don't want to put too much too much pressure into it is because you don't want your meat to turn into goo. Right, this is actually starting to look really, really, really good. There we go. So, you end up with something that looks a little squishy, but it's still all in one piece. That's the that's the key part. So it's nice all in one piece, nice and flat. There's no big bumps or anything like that in it. And there you go. Nice and good. So we're gonna do all these, and then we'll come back and, uh, and go on to the next section. Uh, basically what we're doing is uh, the next step, we've already got our chicken all nice and padded and smashed down so they look like pancakes and they're all still intact. That's the key. So what you want to do is you want to put some, uh, just a little bit of, uh, of the breadcrumbs into a bowl like this so that uh, so you have something to, to bread these things with and that's going to be our breading. And then the cream it goes into a bowl. What are you doing? <laughs> the cream goes into the bowl and uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the, the chicken put it into the cream put it into the into smudge smother it around in the cream well smother it around in the cream first then put it into the breadcrumbs and then we're gonna stuff it right into the cast iron pan and then start cooking it Woo! 360. 360 no scope so the reason why you want to only put a small amount of breadcrumbs in here is because after you start putting chicken in it, all the chicken and the goop and the, um, the cream and everything is going to actually clump breadcrumbs together. So if you only put a small amount in at first, it actually makes it so that it's it too gross to clump together. You can dump that and you're not wasting all of the breadcrumbs. What you want to do is you want to take about uh, two, tea two tablespoons of uh, oil into your cast iron pan or whatever pan you're using. If you're using a non-stick pan, you may not need to use the oil, but use a very small amount of oil, but double check with uh, with whoever owns the bloody pan first before you start putting everything into it. Um, and you wanna preheat the pan, so try and keep it on like a medium to high heat or a high heat right off the hop, and then reduce the heat as necessary because you don't want to overcook this stuff since it's just breadcrumbs. Oh yes, <laughs> big thing too, before before you uh, before you start touching anything else, after you've touched raw chicken, always wash your hands. Remember, we're, we're always about safety here. Wash your hands because chicken is a breeding ground for salmonella, not good. So, if you're touching chicken, then chicken, then that's fine. But if you just check, if you're going from chicken to say the rest of your ingredients, always wash your hands. And that's if it's chicken, raw chicken to raw chicken. If you're going to raw chicken to cook chicken, always wash your hands. Yeah, right. definitely. Yes, if you're done dealing with the raw chicken, don't touch anything else before you wash your hands. So, this is what we're doing. We're taking our chicken, and we're just literally drip, just dropping it right into the cream. We're probably gonna, you're probably not gonna need as much cream as it says because the cream's probably not going to stick that well to this. Plus you don't want it to be gooping all inside of your uh, inside of your uh, breadcrumbs. So make sure that it's nicely coated and then just kind of wait for it to finish dripping mostly and then throw it into your breadcrumbs and roll it around a bit. Make roll sure around. everything is covered. Yeah. Unless you don't like your bread or your uh, your breading to be all over your, your food, but I would assume that if you're doing bread, you're doing breading, then you'd probably want to have it at least mostly all over your food. So then that's basically what we end up with is something that kind of looks like a, uh, a shake and bake chicken nugget, for the most part. Then we take that and plop it straight into the pan. Gently. Gently. 
You're oh, dealing with oils. Whip it. Do not drop it. Yeah. Do not splash it. This this is actually not hot yet. Yeah. Oh, maybe actually it is. Woo! Yes, it is. Yeah, I have just a little FYI. Do not type, do not do the stupid things that I do on this channel because honestly, I don't have feeling in most of my fingers, so it takes me forever to figure out whether or not things are actually hot. So that's generally how I do it. Is like that because that doesn't hurt. Yeah. But comes from a lot of years of doing dumb things to my hands. Holding mostly, mostly touching hot stuff. Pans. Yeah. Third burners. Thing burners are not a fun thing. Do not, do not be dumb and touch hot pans. Welding tools. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> soldering irons. Yeah. I had a nasty soldering iron accident when I was a kid. That was not fun. Second degree burns. Actually, I lost, I lost total feeling in my in my palm from it. It was not good. And what I'm doing here is I'm just I'm lifting it up, finding spots that don't have any breading, and then kind of popping those back down and just kind of rubbing them into the into the uh, saw or the breadcrumbs, so that you can kind of get a nice coating. Because I like my breading nice and pretty much like 90, 95 to 100 percent all over my chicken. I don't like to have spots where there's nothing. And then again, just place that inside of your pan. And here's the sizzle sizzle. Yep. Right. And as you can see in the bottom of the pan, the bottom of the container, there's parts that are actually stuck to it. You probably saw it while Mark was doing it, and there's a whole bunch of little beads at the bottom of this. That is what I was talking about. So it's going to be a lot harder to actually coat the next piece because of those beads. Not impossible. Just really hard. No, these these just start ending up becoming like big chunks of like um, goopy dough. Yeah, basically, just big chunks of like extra seasoning that you don't really need on your on your uh, on your chicken. So I'm gonna do this. Oh wow, it's starting to smell like my grandfather's house in here. That's a good thing. That is a good thing. He's a good cook. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna do up these first these first couple. And then uh, we'll be back to show you the. Uh, we'll we'll do a little quick cutscene, and we'll start doing the. Uh, we'll start switching over to the uh, the actual braiding portion, or the the sauce portion. Mm mm mm. Look at that. And these are starting to look really good. Like the breading, the breading is pretty much all. See, this is why I said I like to have it all over the place because you are going to lose a little bit in the pan. See if you notice over here, all that stuff there. You're going to lose a little bit in the pan, but. The rest of it should stick really, really well, but you just have to make sure. You're right? constantly flipping it. Yeah, so you're constantly watching it, constantly flipping it, because now I've got... I accidentally forgot about that one. And the flipping is, is a little bit more a little bit more of an issue um, as you start cook, as you cook it. I actually might have to turn this down just a little bit. Probably a good idea. But this this is why you do the first couple, and then you always you always have your you always do your first couple as like kind of testers, just to make sure that your pan is just right and everything else is just right. So, but see how this one's already nice and browned and everything like that. That's not going to be coming off anytime soon. So there we go. And you just leave these on for a little bit. Let them sizzle, let them fry up, and then we're going to put them on the pan and uh, throw them in the oven to just kind of just kind of simmer a little bit. Now it's at 200 degrees, and it's just to make it so that it stays warm while we're cooking the sauce, as well as maybe dry out things as well. Ooh, baby! Now, because we're using a cast iron pan, cast iron pans tend to uh, soak up all the oil. Yeah, so I actually had to add in... I, I, had to add in a little bit extra just um, because the first two the uh, the breading soaked up half of it and then the pan soaked up the rest so I ended up having to add in uh, about two more two more tablespoons just so that it wouldn't stick as badly just listen to your pan if you need a little bit more only add a little bit as needed depending on the type of pan you're using so We've got the last two chickens going on the uh, on the stove right now. We have the last two chickens going on the stove right now. There we, there they are. And we didn't measure out just well enough, so we have a little extra um, of the seasoning. 
So I might do something with that, but I might not. And uh, Kobe's going to sit here. And she's actually portioning out all the rest of the stuff. If you have, if you have a uh, partner or a uh, or a helper to cook, always make sure that they're. Or if if you need something for them to do, getting all the rest of your ingredients ready and like measured out and everything like that is always a good idea. Fresh so that's what. Things, holy five. crap! How much are you using? Oh, wait, Whoa, that is garlic. What are you doing? How much garlic do they need, does it ask for? Two tablespoons. Two tablespoons, not six pounds. Not six pounds. That is, that's like almost two cups. Six Woman, cups. that is gonna be gross. I don't even want to put it all in. Wow. Okay, we need to put you down because we have. Cooking emergency. Yeah, our our chicken has been having a little bit of issues. The last one. Woo. Okay, calm down. The last couple, these last two, they've been having issues with the oil. Was just soaking up the oil. So it was either the pan or the or the chicken has been just soaking up the oil like crazy. So I've been kind of having to keep a really close eye on them. But all the rest of them are looking pretty darn good. So if I could zoom in, I'd show you. But. Those are looking really, really good. And I've got a couple of little ones over here for tasters right there. So when we're done the, the gravy, when we're done everything over on this table, we'll be able to we'll be able to actually show you what uh, what we actually have and we get to taste a little bit before the kids get home. Yeah, and if you guys weren't if you guys didn't know, we actually do eat all of this stuff for dinner every time that we make it. So this is actually going to be our dinner for, for the night. But we're gonna add in some vegetables and like probably a side dish for probably this. So some mashed yeah maybe or... some mashed potatoes or some rice or something like that. So anything that we especially with a with a, a, spe a specific meal like this, like chicken does well with it, pretty much anything. But always try and try and make it more of a rounded meal. So don't just eat this like it's not the same thing as the, the cannelloni where it's like the the entire meal is in the in the uh, meal or in the recipe. This is just chicken and breading, so you're gonna need your you're gonna need your vegetables and everything like that. So try and keep it um, try and keep your your meals balanced as much as possible. Then when you eat horribly like this, or well, I guess it's not technically horribly, but it's. Uh, not as healthy as you could eat, then at least you're getting you're getting some nutrients. And now that these are done, they're just gonna go slide right into. Woo! That was no good. Okay, so I just snapped my spatula. Fantastic! So now I'm gonna have to go get a new one of those. Fantastic! Alright, and we're just gonna take these and put them straight back into the thing. That was that kind of dangerous. Yeah, Anyways, turn off your stove and move the pan off to the back side so that. Actually, I need this. I need to scrape. Scrape all the excess off so that I can use it so I can clean this a little bit easier later. Anything that you guys can do um, to aid yourself in cleaning, like. The, the cleanup afterwards is always a great idea, especially with a cast iron pan. The biggest thing that you could do is just take it, take like a spatula, a nice hard spatula or something like that, and just scrape off anything that's stuck on. And then when you go to clean it, when you go to clean it later, it's just a quick wipe down, and you don't lose all that seasoning that, that you put into your pans. So we are. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna leave that there for now. So it's just got all the little gupping stuff on the back side, but it's not cooking anymore because that's off. But we got a little bit of oil still on the pan. That's not a big deal. We're gonna pay attention to that, and it's not gonna be it's not gonna be an issue. So what are we doing over here? What do we need? That goes in first. Okay. So it's, we're making a double batch. So we actually call for two tablespoons of garlic and um, butter. So we double that. To Four tablespoons each, and this is the reason why he was freaking out that looked like six cups. <laughs> I'm taking three 
Add more if we need to. So this. So you cook this um, in a saucepan until it melts and it smells nice and everything like that, and then you start slowly adding everything. Else. Okay. So we're gonna while well, Kobe figures out what else we need to do, and then we're gonna take this and we're gonna take it over to the pan, and I'm just gonna leave this right here for now and I'm gonna go find a pan or you said saucepan 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 so saucepan for anybody that's not really like super good at cooking or anything like that or super super knowledgeable with cooking saucepan is basically just a pot any kind of any kind of like small low low pot Preferably with a handle on. So, I've got tons of these because I use them for everything. I don't just use them for sauce, I use them for literally everything. So, we're going to put that three cups over here. Three cups of food. It has to be a little bit, three cups of food. Yeah, this, these ones, these ones um, generally hold a four. Four cups of liquid without... A small runder. Oh, looks fine. We don't need... No, I told you we only need three quarters. Because it's only six. So, oh, you were doubling everything, so it's whatever. No, I figured that that was going to happen. So... It's only a little bit. Yeah. So, if you're wondering what we're talking about, this... Here. Hang on. Go. That is what she's talking about. Technically, we're only supposed to have a half or one cup. And because we're trying to double it, we're uh, about an eighth of a cup short yep. for the cream. Which is actually exactly how much we had left in the in the bowl when we were done. So, that's actually kind of funny. But, what we're going to do now, I don't know, there we go. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to start sorting everything out in the pan. We need to clean, that to off, clean the off the, the stove first, because it's got grease all over it, and I don't want to start a grease fire. The grease fires are bad! This is the cloth that I actually used to wash the dishes before I left, before we started. So it's actually got a little bit of oil in it, or a little bit of um, soap in it. So it's good, cleaned it up. Nice, nice and easy too. So, we're going to put that on there. Actually, it'll be halfway between the six and nine. Melt butter Whereas, over medium heat and add the garlic. Alright, so we're just melting the butter. That's a lot of butter. That's oh, sauce we're making. Yeah, it's a perfect. One of the problems with cream sauce. Uh oh. There we go. Something apparently was stuck to the bottom of the pan. The sauce pan. It's still pot. I still call it a pot. But that's what we're doing. We're, we're melting. We're melting the butter. And then we're gonna add in the the garlic. And if you don't need to use um if you don't need to use your uh, your utensils and stuff like that, then don't worry about it. You like, are gonna use your utensils. Most of we're about to have fun. Yeah. Well, yeah. Eventually, we, you will. But if you don't have to, don't don't worry about it. Try to use as little as little as possible because you know, especially if you're doing this at home by yourself, you're the one that's gonna end up having to clean it up. So try to try to conserve. Um, even if you're not the one that cleans it up, try and conserve for your, for others. Kind of look out for everybody. You know? Oh god. What you can also do is And to... cut to it being melted. I'm, gonna yeah, toss this. It's, it's I, nice. I'm just gonna toss this all in. Screw it. I should have done this beforehand. That seems like way too well, much. Don't put it all in. It seems way, way too much. I can probably overdid it. Yeah, but by a lot. Yeah. You have like an extra table. If not more in here, but I need that much. I'm not gonna use the whole bloody thing, or else it's gonna taste like shit. It's gonna taste like poopy, poopy butt stuff. And just let that go. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so this is all done, and it's ready for the flour. So all that we're gonna do is just continuously stir it. We're gonna continuously stir it while we pour, while we put this the. The flour in. So I'm going to start stirring and then I'm going to dump the flour in. 
and it should work out quite well because the way that uh, the way that this works is okay. Sorry about that. The uh, my camera decided that it didn't want to video tape anymore. So basically, what's going on is uh, the butter will actually keep the um, will keep the flour from actually turning into heat, but you have to keep stirring it so it doesn't actually clump. And then, once that is all in there nice and nice, neatly, yeah, that's three. Do a little bit less than that one, please. Um, we need a ton more. Yeah, that's better. And we're just going to keep stirring that until it basically. This is what's going to happen. It's going to look kind of like. Um, like dough for the most part, or like the beginnings of dough. When we were making the, the um, when we were making the, the cookies, the, the chocolate chip cookies, remember it kind of, it had that weird consistency where it was like gloopy, but not gloopy, but not like solid, but it was it definitely wasn't liquid anymore. That's basically the consistency that you're trying to get, uh, get to, especially in a cream sauce. So what is that? Oh, that's broth. Okay, we need two of those, right? We need two. Okay, so then you want to put that in there too. Alright. And that's going in. So, and I'm continuing to stir so that it's not clumping. So it's not going to clump. Because I just made it even more goopy. How did that work? Okay, you need to take this. Because I. Need to. I Need to hold on to this. And, then this. and that's the chicken broth. Now it's got the consistency of freaking mashed potatoes. Those crappy box mashed potatoes from the store. That is weird. You put a liquid in here and all of a sudden it turns solid. That's nuts. Chemical reactions, dude. I wonder why. Evaporation from the water. Oh, you know what? It's probably because of the salt content. Salt? Oh, it says no salt added. We, we've actually been going... I just used salt and butter. Yeah, we've been trying to, we've been trying to uh, cut back on the amount of salt that we're using. Not entirely, just... Because, on certain things, like big yeah. things like this, when you're roasting it, it's more. It's more because it's not because we're trying to be healthy. It's because my parents are trying to be healthy. So anytime that they come down, we we have to have stuff that's like low sodium and that kind of crap. So now we're gonna add the cream in slowly. Now I did top up to the two um, cup level of just a little bit of milk. So we'll let you know how right. well this works. Stir, boy, stir. And then I gotta find out what's going on. Yeah, because it tastes, the, uh, the cream, there's a problem with adding that much cream all at once, is you end up getting clumps. Yes, that's why you said do it slowly. Well, I don't have two hands. I don't have 16,000 hands. I was going to pour it. And then somehow I ended up handing it to you a Oh, you know what? I have a secret weapon. Yes, you do. Am I supposed to be still cooking this? Or? For five minutes. Okay. And yeah, it's all done. So we need to have two tables, uh, two teaspoons of salt. No. So that's what it says. What else we want to add? <laughs> Same as we always do. Two teaspoons. You gotta be kidding me. That's nope. A ton. That's exactly what it said. Two teaspoons is a ridiculous amount. So we lowered it to that. That's good. Yeah, maybe a little bit more. Uh, I don't like this thing. Yeah. There. You like one teaspoon. Yeah, that's about a teaspoon. That's actually only about a quarter teaspoon. That's yeah. about a teaspoon. It's all nice and big. Look at that. See? My 
Secret Weapon has turned a clumpy mess into beautiful, creamy sauce. Less, less mm -hmm. clumpy stuff. What? It's not clumpy at all. It's got... That's the garlic. Uh, next time I'm going to blend it more. There's the pepper. I'm and add the pepper. And just keep stirring until, until it's keep ready. Stirring. Just keep stirring. Yeah. Keep stirring. Oh, look at that. It looks like a latte. I know. Looks like a fancy latte. It looks like cinnamon. That's what I put on. Don't drink this straight. Oh, well, I don't know. To be honest with you, I haven't even tested this yet. This is a whole brand new recipe for me. So, we're going to... This will be the first time that I'm trying it, along with probably some of you guys. So, we're going to have to see how this is actually going to taste. And then maybe I'll just drink the whole bloody thing. I might have to bite the rest of the Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here. I don't, I don't know if I would want to drink that much butter and cream and everything like that. This is mostly just butter and cream. So. <laughs> and again, if you guys ever want to see... Uh... Oh, there we go. If you guys ever want to see the like anything that... Uh, that you guys have cooked or you want to see me t taste test something that you guys have cooked or um, you want to see how I would cook something that maybe didn't taste the greatest um, yeah just leave it in the comments down below or uh, you know I've always got a I've also got the, uh, the Facebook page and a Twitter account now so uh, if you ever want to drop me a line to, there as well um, and all, always links are in the description if you have a recipe that you're not sure if you like very much, but you have the recipe, send it to us. Put it in your Facebook, put it in the comments, and we'll try it. Yeah, we'll try it. I might actually be able to improve on it. So. He's only following directions because I'm doing all the stuff. I'm only following directions. Actually, I'm not even following the directions still because I'm making different things. So basically, what we're doing now is we're just taking all the cheese that we have and we're just dumping it all in. Stuff it all in, it'll melt. Why are you squishing it to... Because I'm playing with my food. Don't play with it, just leave it in there. It'll melt, and then it'll, it'll, it'll conform. Just like, it will be assimilated. Just like the board. Just dump the rest in. Yeah, yeah, just grab the whole thing. Look. That's all we need. Done! We had just enough Parmesan cheese. Alright, so, this is getting really, really, really thick now that we put in the, uh, the cheese. And basically all that we're doing is just continuously stirring until all of the, uh, the chunks from the, the, um, the cream cheese has melted. And then pretty much, what is it? As soon as the, the cream cheese is melted, it's basically done, right? Give me a second, I'll double check. Alright. Yeah, pour sauce onto the serve and off onto it and serve immediately. There you go. So once it's all melted and looking like natural sauce instead of, you know, cake mix, then, uh, then it's all done and ready to serve for dinner. Looks like the Parmesan cheese probably should have gotten mashed up a little bit before I put it in. So, that's what we ended up with. And it is super, super thick. Look at this. Just, just dripping. Barely. Like, oh yeah. And it tastes so good. Mmm. Mmm. Look at that. I'm going to try some. Mmm. Mmm! Oh wow! That is delicious sauce. All right. So we're just gonna move that off to the, off the heat. We're gonna move that off the heat, and we're going to double check the chicken. And look at that! If you look right there, you can see that little pool of grease. That's the one thing. That's one nice thing about. Uh, over baking or oven baking your stuff. Um, if you deep fry or fry your stuff before you put it into the um, into the oven, 
you can actually put down like a layer of uh, of like wax paper or something like that. Something that'll be that'll be okay inside of the oven, and it'll actually the, the baking process will actually drain out some of that uh, some of that oil, so that it's not as um, I guess bad for you. Um, technically, oils aren't as long as they're they're good natural oils, then they shouldn't be they shouldn't be horrible for you as long as you keep them in moderation. But we are going to pull those out of the oven and uh, do a little bit of a plating and then uh, yeah we'll be back in a little bit to uh, give you a, give you our, our thoughts on the taste test. All right be right back. So Mark may grab all the rest of the stuff that we have in the container so all the butter, milk, added more flour, the garlic stuff, the last bit of garlic, uh, the breadcrumbs, <coughs> the milk, cream, all that, mix it all together, add flour, turn it into a dough. I added one egg as well. Oh my I added one egg and enough flour to make it turn into uh, uh, like kind of the consistency of pie dough, basically, and pie crust. And now all I'm doing is adding in a little bit of leftover cheese from the, from our, uh, our meal the other day. Just shredded it's, it's, uh, marble cheese. Just shredded marble cheese. I'm just crushing it into the into the dough, and then rolling it up, flattening it over, and then rolling it into a bowl. This is just something that I I figured I'd try. This is not a recipe or anything like that. It's just I had leftover stuff and I didn't want to waste it, so I figured I as well make it into something that's edible and can put it onto the side dish. And now that we have all of our nice little dough balls full of cheese, we're going to take them over to the deep fryer and I'm going to throw them in there because it's just easy. Yeah, yeah. If, you're, you know, if you're not old enough to technically be doing stuff by yourself, please be careful. Always always have adults with you and potentially ask them to do it for you. Ask them to do it for you because you can hurt yourself real bad on that piece. You can hurt yourself real bad on a lot of this stuff. I mean, the kitchen is not a place to be uh, playing. playing. Otherwise, have fun. Enjoy yourself, because cooking is fun. So, oh, remember how I was saying that I had a, had a rolling pin? I found it. Apparently my wife knew where the hell it was all the time. So, just clean it up. <laughs> Trying to get everything off the table so that we can actually eat right after this. Some sauce, just some frozen vegetables, and some mash uh, macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Always be careful of the flour too when you're using flour because it gets all over the place and it makes everything all slippery. I'm sliding all over the place, and I only I didn't even use that much flour. Well, I guess there's a ton on the peanut butter right now. But looking at the butt. Anyway, so. <sighs> Chicken's all done, ready to go. You don't need that for that. What? I already turned the oven off. Well, it doesn't do anything to the timer either. Okay. So, and again, we got a little bit of grease on the sides there, just from sitting in there. But they're all nice and cooked well. We've got our little taste testers right here. So you turn it a bit more and cooked a bit longer, so... Mm -hmm. The other thing about doing this, this way, is if for some reason you can't tell the difference between pink and not, uh, put it in the oven and it finishes without over-frying and charcoal in your food. Put it, put it in the oven for a little bit until it's done. It keeps it warm and it keeps it, uh, yeah. And it cooks it just a little bit more. You got a little bit here. I'm just gonna dip. Next up. Just a couple of times. Mm. A bunch of them. Oh my goodness. Chicken was good on its own, but that, that is good. Mm. Mm. Delicious. And uh, if you didn't notice, we have our vegetables, and Kobe made some uh, mac and cheese, some white, white cheddar mac and cheese to go along with it. Because you just have your chicken and your sauce, it's not quite enough, so. Always remember, vegetables are good for you, even if they don't taste so good. 
This stuff will mask any flavor that you want to put on. So if you want to throw them all over your veggies, which I'm probably going to do as well, it'll be delicious. But anyways, oops, I went right over my head. messed up the thing. There we go. All right. So, thanks guys for watching. Um, I hope you enjoy this stuff. Definitely try it out for yourself. It is actually really good. And remember, I'll, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead and, uh, and actually pick up the best species that you have for your own. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to the website that I actually gave it to. Good. Uh, big thanks to them. They had a great idea. So, uh, I honestly can't remember what the, uh, what the website was called, um, but what is it called? The Midnight Baker. The Midnight Baker. So thanks to them. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to their website and to that actual recipe, um, exactly where I found it, so that you guys can go off and try it yourself, and if you like it, print it off, throw it in your, uh, throw it in your cookbook, so, so you can have it anytime. But uh, thanks guys for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button if you like this kind of stuff, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, so you can keep up with everything that we're doing on the channel. All right, and uh, maybe you can even uh, put in your own suggestions for uh, for anything that you want to see us cook or play or anything. We don't do just the cooking uh, on this channel. We do the, we, I also do uh, do video. video games. That's right, video games on during the week. So. Uh, again, thanks guys for watching, and uh, till next video, take your easy. <laughs> That's awesome. What are you doing down here anyway? Well, guess what? I'm down here because I want it.